Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Digicams for Days. I'm VM Campos and this is the series where I can talk about Digicams for Days. Yes, very creative. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the Canon PowerShot SD870IS, my settings to take great photos, and shots to inspire you. So as you can see, I recently took a bunch of photos of some beautiful flowers. I'll tell you all my settings and technique so that you can capture your own amazing shots a little bit later. But first, let me tell you about the camera. The Canon PowerShot SD870, also known as the Ixus 860 and the Ixi 910, was released in 2007 and has an 8 megapixel sensor. Now I know that the Ixus 70, also known as the SD1000, is a bit more of the popular one at the moment that everyone wants. But if you want to get into the PowerShot family without those prices for the SD1000, the 870 is a really good choice. The styling is slightly different than the 870, not as svelte, but I kind of like the curves of this one a little bit better than the 1000, to be honest. Also, it's more affordable. If you want even more affordability and also in the same sort of family is the little brother of the 870, the SD800, also known as the Ixus 850 and the Ixi 900. Now this is the one released in 2006, so it's one year older than this one. It's got seven megapixels and the styling is slightly different. You see you've got sort of a matte silver versus a more silver silver. On the newer one, you've got this huge screen, which is beautiful. This one's got a smaller screen, but wait, what does this one also have? An optical viewfinder. These were ditched by the Digicam makers eventually. It was just an extra expense and it all just focused on a screen. And if you're a younger shooter, a, a, a person into Digicams a little bit younger than me, you're, you're used to looking at a screen to take a photo, but there's just something about a viewfinder that really hits. You feel like, no offense, but you feel like a real photographer when you look through a viewfinder up to your eye. You also have the sort of protection of taking a photo, especially portraits, when you're looking through the viewfinder because there's the separation between the subject and the camera and you, rather than looking at the screen. It just kind of hits differently, you know? So this is a good alternative. It's even more affordable than the 870, which is more affordable than the 1000. And lastly, to compare, then we've got the later generation, the 2009 Nikon Coolpix S220 in this beautiful purple tones. This one's got more megapixels, bigger screen, more style, more compact than these Canon Power Shots. And after all, it's from 2009, so it's got newer technology. But this group right here is, are some of my uh, favorite Digicams to shoot with at the moment. All right, so let's actually take a look at what my settings were to get some of those great shots. Okay, we're gonna turn this on. And I'll just go through all my various settings. Okay, number one, you gotta get your, your ISO. Um, the thing about ISO is that any value that helps you take the photo is the right value. Now, the lower ISOs are less grainy, less noisy, technically. The shots are a little bit clearer but you might want the style of a grainy, of a noisy image. So you go up to the higher ISOs, which will also change your settings, like faster shutter speeds to capture action. In my particular case, I was shooting in broad daylight, so I went with ISO 100, just a classic ISO speed for bright lights. Next up, you've gotta be in manual mode. Okay, so auto mode helps you a lot, does a lot for you, you get some nice shots, but when you want to step up your game, you go to manual mode, then you have access to all of these other features, which I'll explain right now. But you've got to really switch over to manual mode for the most creative control. For example, exposure compensation of plus one third. At zero, the camera will pick perfect settings and take a great shot, but I want a little bit more light, a little bit more brightness in my shots. And this is just a personal thing. You saw in my shots though that that came out really nice. 
And if you want even brighter, you can go up to one full stop. Although sometimes you overexpose too much, but hey, that's a style as well. So I want a little bit of overexposure, one third of a stop. Here's a big secret of taking great digicam shots. We have white balance, which based on the color of light in the scene, determines the tone of the image. Automatic white balance, AWB, works pretty well most of the time, but when you want to get creative and in control, you can set yourself daylight, cloudy, tungsten, which is indoor lights, etc. Now already this has got a blue tone under tungsten, so if you want blue tones, there's the secret. Now I want these warm tones, which actually happens through cloudy, because of the shadows cast during the day through clouds, etc. It's science, I don't know. So daylight and cloudy are good, but if you want even more of that warm tone, you gotta go with cloudy. We've got custom color as our picture styles over here, and this one I will reveal in just a little bit. I gotta do a little bit of suspense, right? So we'll come back to that. This is one of the most important settings. We'll be back. Next up, on your metering. How do we get the perfect exposure, either evaluative, center-weighted, spot? Now, this is really advanced, actually, and honestly, evaluative is just gonna do a great job. It'll evaluate the whole image, pick the perfect settings, take a great shot. More advanced over here? That's maybe for another video. You wanna go with super fine quality. And in this memory card, I can take over 2000 shots. If I want more shots, okay, go with fine quality. If I want even more shots, go with normal. This isn't really worth it to go with anything lower. You are gonna get another kind of an aesthetic if you have a lower quality photo, sure. So you can explore that on your own to see how you like it. But 2000 shots for me is plenty. And also I'm at the highest quality of eight megapixels. I'm ringing out every pixel out of the sensor. You can go with smaller shots for various reasons. You can fit even more. Watch this, if you go down to the smallest of 640 by 480, you get so many shots, it's over 9,000. 9,000? There's no way that could be right. But I'm gonna go with the highest megapixels, get every single pixel out of the sensor and at high quality. And you'll get shots like this. Nice shots, huh? Well, there's a couple more settings to show you to get those shots. Okay, back to the menu. So once again, we go into the menu here, you press your function set, and you go here to picture style. The default is off, just shoot everything normal, it's fine. You can go with vivid colors, which I also like a lot. I use vivid a lot. Uh, we got neutral for various reasons, sepia tone if you wanna pretend you're in the 1800s, black and white, if you wanna be a real artiste, and then other uh, sort of simulations like positive film, etc. But here's the secret. Yeah, all of those are good. But I'm going to jump over here to custom. Under custom, you hit display. You get all of these other settings that then you can further manipulate. Let's start off with contrast. I'm going to put my contrast all the way to the maximum. So that's a plus two. I want a lot of separation between tones, a lot of contrast. Sharpness. I'm going to bump that up plus one to make the image a little bit sharper, not too, too much. It might be too artificial at plus two, but it's a little bit more on plus one. Saturation. I love the colors out of this camera, out of the sensor, so I bump it all the way up to the maximum plus two. Give me all those colors. Speaking of colors, then we're going to manipulate each individual color also. Give me all the red. Just bring out all the warmth of the image plus two. I'm gonna be shooting some flowers where there's gonna be some greenery, leave the greenery as is. You can bump it up a little bit if you also want to make the green pop, but I found my results with normal green, fine. But I then do bring the blue down to negative one. I don't need as much blue in my images, so take it down one. And skin tone. This one's interesting because it's actually going to be leaning the image towards red or leaning the image towards green overall, so further tinting the image. It's kind of weird how they name this particular setting because it's really just shifting towards the reds or the greens in general, leaving that as normal, no changes. This is all in the custom color. This is why I really like these power shots. You can kind of create your own recipe right here under custom, whereas all these other ones are customized for you. You can go in and do a variety of settings, the plus and the minus, and even down to each red, green, and blue color. So that's my secret there in the custom color. Let me show you some nice shots, and then I've got one more technique. All 
right final technique. So this uh, lens is a zoom lens. It goes from 4.6 to 17.3 millimeters. That is an equivalent in 35 millimeter of 35 millimeters to 105 millimeters. So wide angle to close up. Here's a technique. To take those great close-ups of flowers, you need to zoom in to the maximum zoom, which the camera says it's 17.3 millimeters in 35 millimeter equivalent, it's 105 millimeters. So we're zoomed in as much as we can, 105 millimeters to get really close to the subject, those flowers. And because we're trying to get close up to the subject, we're also going to activate here the macro mode. So within the dial here, you press to the left. Do you want to shoot normal? Do you want to shoot infinity? Do you want to shoot macro? So obviously with normal, that's what everyone's going to be using most of the time. If you're trying to take, a, take photos of things far away, you go to infinity, of course, but I'm trying to take things close up, so macro. And that's my final technique. I want to be zoomed in as much as possible to the 105 millimeter equivalent zoom. And you want to activate macro mode. It's so convenient that they used a little flower. That's easy to remember. And you'll end up with photos like this. Nice shots, huh? Yeah, I think they're nice enough to be published online. Instagram, of course, is a place to share your photos. But wait a minute, let me tell you about Reddit. If you head on over to Reddit slash r slash vintage digital cameras, you can join our amazing community of Digicam enthusiasts. If you've got a vintage digital camera, that is one from 2010 and older, come on in and join the community. Post your favorite shots, either straight out of camera or edited, post photos of your gear, chat with the community, learn from the community. It's a really cool place. r slash vintage digital cameras. Tell them VM Campo sent you. So there you go. Those are my techniques to getting the most out of your Canon PowerShot SD870, also known as the Ixus 860 and the Ixi 910. Who cares about the SD1000 when you can get a very affordable, very equivalent camera to create some great photos with a nice vibe. Once again, I also mentioned the little brother, the SD800, which has an optical viewfinder so you, so you can actually look like you're a photographer. And it's even more affordable. It has the same settings, actually. You can go to the custom settings and set the same settings and do the same technique, zoom in, macro mode. Plus the control of this is a little bit more tactile where you have a little dial that you go through modes. Wow, amazing. And you can get somewhat similar results in the Coolpix S220, but that's for another video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the good stuff. I really appreciate it. If you really liked the video, consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. Unlock exclusive stuff, fund the channel, keep it going, be a part of it. All for $3.33 a month at Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. If you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the good stuff. Help me go viral. I would really appreciate it. I've been VM Campos, and this has been Digicams for Days.